So apparently there are some people that say they're concerned about my mental health and that I'm using it to exploit and scam people. My reply to that is, you obviously don't know me. That's the last thing I'd ever do. And the work that I do is rescuing human traffic and soul trafficked individuals and helping my clients release negative trapped emotions and energies that create everything from abuse energies, addictions, and other traumas. Try again. Try again. Try again. And there you go, folks. That's how we clear things up around here. We just do passive aggressive videos to everybody except for everybody else except for addressing things directly. It drives me insane. Oh my God, this drives me insane. I don't understand the amount of total disregard for other humans around her. Other humans around people like this. I'm sorry. I need to correct myself. I just know I was raised better than this. I know I have a moral compass and a love for God. And Lord Jesus, please keep me close to the freaking cross right now because I have been holding this in for over two years now. Over two years. That is a very long time to sit and be quiet as much as, as, as hard as it was. As hard as it, as hard as it is, it is so difficult. That's why I named this channel Difficult Research because it has been this, it, it's been so difficult. It's making me stutter. <laughs> so with that being said, I don't usually entertain these things. Not that I'm entertaining them now. I, I just, I'm tired of being quiet. I'm tired of trying to be the bigger person when I already know that I am. I already know this. I'm not better than anyone else. That's not what I'm saying. I just know that I am bigger than entertaining this kind of crap because right out the gate from the jump the kids were not even missing I mean the, the kids were missing it didn't go public it didn't hit the news source uh, the news sources whatever you want to call them it didn't hit news until December 28th December 21st. I'm sorry, December 21st, I think. Don't quote me, but, um, and I really d did not know one thing about YouTube besides my kids were always watching YouTube videos and I used to fuss them all the time and pick up them for watching YouTube videos all the time. Shame on me. Shame on me because here I am <laughs> over two years later. And that's how I found out what YouTube was. Tylee and JJ, their story broke um, that they were missing in Rexburg or from Rexburg, Idaho, um, December, I want to say 21st. Yeah, my daughter's birthday is two days later. 2019. December 21st, 2019. So, I do remember my parents actually doing um, an interview with Gray Hughes. He's a, a, an amazing YouTuber here, true crime. Um, he, he's amazing. Like, I need to thank him. Like, I really do. Thank you. Thank you, Gray Hughes. <laughs> I'm sorry for not thanking you sooner um, for all your help and support and for all that you do. Uh, along with the rest of the true crime community. It's, it's amazing <clears throat> what we can do when we just 
put our energy in the right place and put our differences to the side because it's those that are missing that mean the very most they need us they they uh, that's what i felt with tyler and jj they needed us so bad but we didn't know that i didn't know that and we will never know uh, these things and i pray to god that nobody else has to figure this out and learn this the way that I have I don't ever want anybody to hurt like this and I don't want anybody to to lose a loved one especially children in, in such a heinous dehumanizing total disregard disrespect just despicable I guess I'm going through the D's right now <laughs> um, well while I'm there demonic devil yeah I mean we can anyways I don't want anybody else to to lose a loved one to murder it is so senseless I couldn't have said it any better than John Crimes thank you John Crimes his videos were very impactful very amazing they helped me big time when i needed it the most and that's what i'm talking about the compassion the love the force the drive the the voice for the victims for these victims they don't have a voice because theirs was robbed it was stolen and like Tylee and JJ, Charles, my uncle, um, this is my job. And this is, I know that this is my life's passion now. Like this is my life's work. I never knew what I wanted to be when I grew up. I'm 43. This happened when I was 41. And I still didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. I've, I've done so many different kinds of job, paths, you know, you name it. I've, I've done it. I just, whenever this happened though, it shook me. But I knew without a reason of doubt, I knew that this was my life's work this is this is what i have to do for the rest of my life and i i'm honored to be their voice to be their advocate to find my way in this through this around this uh you never get around it and you never get over it you never get through it you just have to keep moving and putting one foot in front of the other one foot in front of the other and that's on a good day it's hard to do one breath after the next it's such a horrible paralyzing place to to be so numb and yet you know, i've just tried to find the beauty in all this I tried to to find Tylee's face in all of this, her voice. I try to find JJ's little cute face and his spirit, their spirits. I mean, my Uncle Charles, I mean, what a great guy. I see, I just, every time I want to give up, which is not often, but it's been more lately than it, you know, ever has. I never just wanted to back down so much as I have here lately. And every time I shut my eyes, I, I see Uncle Charles's 
no, I hear Uncle Charles' voice, and I see JJ's face. I, I, it's just, oh, just don't know my place in this. Besides raising awareness, trying to get to the bottom of all this, there's a reason that all this has come to light. There's a reason, you know, that that a, a alleged cult you know, had even been mentioned in the beginning of this. There's a reason. I mean, you don't just make that kind of stuff up and just be like, okay, well, that's what, okay, cult, zombies, you got it. I'm on board. No. Hell to the no. <laughs> this is um, unexplainable. I still don't have the words to describe what this is. I just know that this is my reality and I'm going to make the damn best out of it. That's for sure. And I mean, I know that I probably come off as abrasive or awkward and that, that's fine. You know, I, I realize that this is not a very easy place to be slapped into. I didn't ask for murder. It just kind of happened to my family and here here you go here you go here's a little murder you know and not just a little here's here's a whole freaking lot but really who the here, hell now deal with that i mean you be competent with that this was Kresha. placed on my lap oh, i'm dealing that's with a it. hard pill to swallow every day anger's nothing so i just can't let it get yeah, the best i get of a little me. angry as people we can't let that get the best of us because if we do then we're allowing them to win and I refuse, I refuse to allow them to win. They don't get that say-so over my life. I don't ever care to talk to Lori. I don't ever care to ever talk to Chad. I don't, they have nothing that they say holds any merit anyways. Like in my mind, you know, as I've reflected and, and you know, thought, hey, I wonder what that conversation would go like, you know? Yeah, uh, kind of like that Keith Whitley song. You say it best when you say nothing at all. That's exactly how I feel about Lori. When she was just absolute quiet. And I mean, oh, that tight lip stare, whatever the hell. Anyways, when I saw that, I was like, nope, not going to lay the rest of my life in her hands. She don't, she's, she's not good enough to be in my graces. That's my opinion. So, I don't know. I really didn't plan on doing a commentary or uh, being on audio at all. <laughs> um, but I was watching, uh, the other night, I was watching Hidden True Crime um, about Girl on Fire. Uh, Y'all go check it out. Um, it's Lauren and Dr. John and Lori Hellis on Fridays. Um, but she interviewed um, Girl on Fire, who was in the cult with Chad and Julie. That's not alleged. But anyways, it's her story and her husband's story, and it's awesome. I wish that more people would step forward like they have and just release, reveal their truth. You have no idea how much it'll set you free. I hope that, that they um, set a good example. I know they set a good example, but I hope that other people see that they set a good example for others to step forward. It's not a witch hunt. Don't be a witch, you know? This isn't against a religion. This is against two horrible people. Lori and Chad Abel. That's how I see it. They did throw their, their religion, their church, their upbringing, their roots. They threw that under the bus. They turned their backs on, on their people. And that's pretty crappy. It's pretty shady. So I think that we need to f take our focus off of, you know, the 
nitpicking um, the LDS religion apart. There's no sense in it. It's not against the entire religion. It's not against the entire world. It's against two people who use religion, their religion, to do horrible, horrible, horrible freaking things. So that's pretty shitty. Using, throwing a rock at you and then going hide behind a damn cross. Behind Jesus. That is so messed up on so many levels. <laughs> but we all have different levels, different devils. Right? Or core whores. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, neighbors. <laughs> okay. Well, I just want to thank everyone for just, you know, making it through this. <laughs> um, it's going to be more often for me. I know that if I just start using my voice, um, it'll get easier. You know, it's not very easy to just throw yourself out there. And your family is just, all you want to do is just protect everybody. You want to protect everybody that you love because there are some rotten ass people out there doing some shady shit. I'm, I'm not about it, you know. I'll die. I'll take a bullet for anybody in my family. I love them that much. So, I stand for truth. I stand for what I believe in. And we all should. You know? It's the only way that we will all be set free. It's the only way we can make changes in the world. You know? And I don't want my children and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren to live in a crappier world than this. Woo! Everybody buckle up, if so. Oh, is Doomsday coming anytime soon? <laughs> I'll go ahead and hook on to that. Anyways, thank you all so much for coming by and supporting the channel. Uh, I've got to officially change the name to Difficult Research. Uh, just set up a PayPal um, for anybody who feels like they want to donate um it's gonna go towards travel expenses uh to get to to and from the um trials and all that um if they ever happen <laughs> um and also i am taking donations so that i can go ahead and start the nonprofit organization that will be in the names of Tylee Ryan, JJ Vallow, and Charles Vallow. Um, and we're going to do good things with that. We're going to pay it forward. And we're just going to roll with the punches. You know? I know it's going to do great things. I've already seen what their spirits have done in the two years that they've been gone. Can you imagine if it built momentum and could just help, you know, others? <laughs> Anyways, just thank you. That's not necessary. I just thank you for coming by and saying hi and dropping a comment, uh, sharing it, liking it, um, disliking it. I know I hate covering the topics that I have to cover. I don't like stuff either. I hate this. But it's a labor of love that I do. And that's the least I can do for Tylee, JJ, Tammy, and Charles, and Joe. You know, it's the least I can do. They've, um, they've paid the ultimate price, you know. They've had their voices taken away. Their lives taken away. Not, not on my watch. It's, I'm going to humanize them because they were human. They had life. They were beautiful souls, beautiful people, and they had lots of, lots of living to do. So, anyways, y'all take care. I love you guys. Thank you so much. And remember, love always wins. <laughs>